Hello everybody and welcome to this edition of Learning at Home with Mrs. V. All right, so you've noticed today we've got some new concepts that we're going to be talking about. So we've got decomposing fractions. Decompose. Hmm, what does that mean? Well, to compose something means to make it or construct it or build it. So like I'm doing with these Legos. And to decompose means to take it apart. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking apart fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and above decompose, I'm going to write take apart. So I'm going to teach you a way to take apart fractions that's going to help you with our next steps of adding and subtracting fractions and finding um, mixed numbers after you get your result. Okay, so now what is an improper fraction? Improper fractions are when the numerator is larger than the denominator. So when the numerator is a larger number than the denominator, the value of that fraction is going to be more than one. All right? So that's something that we're going to be talking about, we're going to be focusing on, and we're going to be learning how to decompose the fractions to make improper fractions into a mixed number. Now, I don't have mixed number up here. I probably should write that too. So um, let me go ahead and scoot these down so that I can write mixed number up here. All right, so what is a mixed number? Well, a mixed number, let's go ahead and write that mixed number is um, it, a fraction let me go ahead and write it this way. A whole number with a fraction. A whole number with a fraction. All right, so let me go ahead and write an example of each one of these. So an improper fraction would be like, um, an example would be six fourths. So I notice that my numerator is larger than my denominator. And we'll talk more about what that means. All right, and then an example for a mixed number, example would be like um, one and three fourths. That would be a mixed number. All right, so these are all things that we're gonna be focusing on, and we're gonna be talking about this in the next few lessons. All right, so decomposing fractions. So we've got, say, two-fourths. So how can I break that apart? Now you remember we broke apart numbers when we did um, the uh, expanded form. We broke numbers apart into their value times their place, okay? So this is kind of the same concept. So if we break two-fourths down, we could break that down into one-fourth and one fourth. So one fourth plus one fourth gives us two fourths. All right, so that's decomposing or taking apart like I did with these Legos, taking apart two fourths. All right, so let's go ahead and try that with three fourths. And with three fourths, we could do um, one fourth and two fourths. All right, one fourth plus two fourths gives us three fourths. All right, um, I also could do one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth. So I could actually have three lines going off of this and break it into its fourths. Now, what about when we get to four-fourths? Well, there's several ways we could break that down. We could do two-fourths plus two-fourths would give us four-fourths. We could do one-fourth plus three-fourths would give us four-fourths. We could do one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth. All of those are different ways to decompose that. But I do know that when I have the numerator and denominator the same, it equals one whole. So two fourths plus two fourths also gives me one whole. Um, one fourth plus three fourths gives me one whole. All right. Now, what do we do when we get to an improper fraction? So we have five-fourths. Now, the best way to break apart 
an improper fraction, especially when you're referring to or using that in reference to adding and subtracting fractions, we're gonna to wanna to pull out that whole. So I know that four fourths equals one whole. It's the same thing as one, all right? So if I take out four fourths, then I have one more fourth, and that gives me my five fourths. Well, you know, there's something interesting with this. Now I can take this and I can say, well, this is one whole, and it's also one fourth. There I've got my mixed number, all right? All from decomposing that five fourths. All right, so I'm gonna erase these. I'm gonna write some more examples up here. I'm gonna have to keep those two. All right, so what about six fourths? So I've got six fourths. Well, again, in order to make that into a mixed number, it's a good idea for me to pull out that hole. And see, I know there's one hole in there because six fourths is an improper fraction. And I know that is a value of more than one. So I can pull that one hole out and then if I have four fourths, well, I've got six fourths all together, so I know I have two fourths left over inside that fraction still. So again, I know that I've got one whole, and then I've got two fourths. So one and two fourths, one and two fourths is the same as six fourths, all right? Okay, so what about seven fourths. Again, I have an improper fraction, so I know that the value is more than one. So I'm gonna pull out that one whole, and then I have taken four of those fourths out, Well, I know I've got three of those fourths left. So here's my, whoops, ran my finger right across that. Okay, so there's my one whole. So I have one whole and three fourths. Now, all right, something I know about this, three-fourths, if I add one more fourth to it, because it's like adding another quarter, I know I've got another dollar. So let's see what happens when I do eight-fourths. Well, when I have eight-fourths, I can pull one whole out, which is my four-fourths. And then I also have four more fourths left. So look at this. Now I have one hole here. I've got one hole here. Well, one plus one gives me two. So this eight fourths is equivalent to two. Now you remember, I talked about fractions as if they were division problems. I said that line means divided by. Well, if I look at this as a division problem, eight divided by four, well, eight, if I put them in groups of four, I have two groups. Aha, that's where this fraction division thing comes together. So now here I have four divided by four. Aha, if I have four of something, say I have four cookies, and I put them in a group of four, I have one group of cookies. Four divided by four equals one. So when you divide the two numbers, the numerator divided by the denominator, hmm, and you have no remainder, then you have a whole number. So I can go back here and I can say 5 fourths is equivalent to or equal to 1 and 1 fourth. I can say 6 fourths is equal to 1 and 2 fourths. I can say 7 fourths is equivalent to 1 and 3 fourths. 8 fourths is equivalent to 2 whole. Now I'm hoping you see how we're doing this. We're using the information we learned about numerators and denominators in that num when the numerator and denominator are the same, it is a whole number, one whole. Okay, so I'm using that information to pull that whole out of this fraction and then determine, well, what's left? Well, if I've got one whole and then I've got two fourths, I've got one and two fourths. Now, if we keep going, like if I wanted to go on and let me erase these two. And I wanted to go on. The pattern would continue, however, with 9 fourths, when I pull that hole out, so I've got that 4 fourths. Now, look at this. I still have 
four more fourths in there. And then, so four plus four, that's eight fourths. So I still have one fourth left over. So when I pull one hole out, I've got one hole. I've got pull another hole out, there's another hole. And then I have one fourth left. So this would be two and one fourth. And that pattern would continue. Then 10 fourths would be two and two fourths. All right? So that's kind of that's how the decomposing fractions works. All right? So let me go ahead and let me try another one. We just did fourths. Let's try this again with thirds. All right? So um, we've got, uh, if we had a number line, let me go ahead and put a number line here because that's putting a little different twist to it. All right. So I've got zero here, and then I've got one third, I've got two thirds, then I have three thirds, which is also the same as one. Okay? Now, when I decompose this one third, I could make that two thirds and one third. Okay, that's kind of what we were doing before. Then when I go on to the next fraction, I have four thirds. Well, four thirds, I know I've got the hole in there, so I can take out that three thirds. So I know there's one, and then I have one third left over, so that's one and one third. So see how I took out that one hole? I had one third left. So that's where I get the one and one third. There's my mixed number. There's my improper fraction. I decomposed it to create my mixed number. All right, so now I've got five thirds. I can decompose that. I wanna pull out the whole number. So there's three thirds. And then I have two more thirds left because three plus two gives me the five. So I've got my one whole, and then I've got my two thirds left. So it's one and two thirds. So there's my mixed number for my improper fraction. All right, so if I kept going, I have six thirds. I pull out my whole number, three thirds. Well, what's three plus what gives me six? Well, three more thirds, three thirds. So that gives me one plus one, which is two whole. Now, would the pattern keep going? Seven thirds, pull out my whole, so that would be three thirds. Now, I can pull out one more whole, which would be another three thirds, and then three plus three is six, not seven. I have one third left, so I've got one plus one plus one third, which would be two and one third. So then I have eight thirds. Again, I have three thirds. I have another three thirds. So that gives me three plus three is six. And then I have two thirds, which gives me one plus one plus two thirds, which would give me two and two thirds. Now my next one, nine thirds. What do I know about nine thirds? Hmm. Well, I know that when I count by threes, three, six, nine, I can count by threes three times and I get nine. So if I go ahead and try the division of this, nine divided by three, if I get a whole number, then I know that this is gonna be the next hole. So I do, I get three. So I know that there are three holes in nine thirds. If I go back here and I look at my other whole numbers here, I do three divided by three, and that gives me one, okay? Here, I can make this a division problem. Six divided by three equals two, all right? So that's kind of the connection between um, fractions and division. Um, so you can use decomposing fractions in order to change 
an improper fraction to a mixed number. And when you get your answers, um, when we're adding and subtracting fractions, if you come up with an improper fraction, then you know how to change that now to a mixed number. So decomposing fractions can help you change an improper fraction into a mixed number. An improper fraction is when the numerator is larger than the denominator and the value is more than one. A mixed number is a whole number with a fraction and um, for instance, one and three fourths. So I'm hoping you're better understanding this and when you come across these then, when we're adding and subtracting fractions, you can begin to start changing your improper fractions into mixed numbers, all right? So I want you to keep watching, keep thinking, always stay curious, and I'll see you next time.